Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've introduced to you the idea of an isotope. So remember, isotopes are um, elements of the same kind that have a different mass. So a specific isotope is an element, an atom of a certain element that has a specific number of neutrons. Now, when we were introducing isotopes, we introduced a couple of numbers. The atomic number tells the number of protons. It's always a nice exact whole number because every atom of the same type has exactly the same number of protons. So we said every carbon atom has six protons, so the atomic number of carbon is six. We also introduced the mass number or the atomic mass number, which tells the number of protons and neutrons combined. That's also a nice pretty whole number. You have a whole number of protons and a whole number of neutrons. However, when you look at your periodic table, you will not see that atomic mass number. What you see instead is the average atomic mass. So look at this symbol for uranium. You would find this on your periodic table. The atomic number is 92. It has 92 protons. And the average mass of a uranium atom is 238.0289. Notice it's not a nice pretty whole number. And the reason it's not a nice, pretty whole number is this is an average. And I now want to talk about where that average comes from and what it means. And to do that, I want to use an example that's not related to chemistry. So let's say some members of a class took a test. And to keep the numbers easy, we're going to have ten members in our class. And for those ten members, seven of them made a 70. Two of them made an 80. One of them made... 100. Now, if I ask for you to find the average, most of you would say, well, that's easy. You just add them all up and divide by how many numbers there are, which is 10. So let's do that first. We're adding them all up. There are 10 numbers. We are going to divide by 10. Now, if we add that up, 490, 570, 650, 750, we get 750 divided by 10, so the class average is 75. Notice, even though the grades were 70, 80, and 100, the average is much closer to 70. The 70 counted much more than the 100 because a lot more people made a 70. So I want to redo this problem, finding the average, by doing what we call a weighted average. Now, if you saw this, a lot of you, most of you are smart enough to recognize you don't really have to add up all the numbers. You can make it shorter. What you could say is some people made a 70, and there were 7 of them. So instead of adding 70 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70, plus 70 you could simply do 70 times 7. Likewise, you could take 80 and multiply it by 2, and you could take 100, and there's only one of those you can add up all those numbers and divide by the number of things that you have. Seven things here, two things there, one thing's there. That's ten. We still have ten things. So 490 plus 160 is 650 plus 100 is 750. We divide that by ten and our average is still 75. So here we found an average the way that you first learned. We added them all up and divided by how many there are. Now we've redone that average using multiplication to show the appropriate weight. We call that a weighted average. So we took our score, we multiplied it by the weight. We took our score, we multiplied it by the weight. We took our score, we multiplied it by the weight. And we divided by how many there are. I want you to see something different though. What we could do is we could take the scores and simply multiply them by a fraction. Or later we're going to change it into a percent. So notice this 10 is dividing everything. So if I do 7 divided by 10, that's 0.7. So here I really had 70 times 0.7. And here I have 80 times 0.2. And here I have 100 times 0.1. You can also recognize that we can write percents as decimals. In other words, 70% of this is a 70. 20% of this is an 80, and 
of this is 100. So, if, to begin with, we had known the percentages. We could simply find the average by taking each score and multiplying it by the appropriate percent written as a decimal. And when you do this, you, of course, get the exact same average, 75. Now, the reason I bring this up, when we find the average atomic mass, what we do is we measure the relative abundance of different isotopes in nature. And we usually do that as percentages. So let me give you an example, a real world example. Uranium has two main isotopes occurring in nature. There are some others that occur in trace amounts, but these are the two main ones. The vast majority of it, 99.3%, is uranium-238. A smaller part, much smaller, 0.7%, is uranium-235. So if you look at the mass on the periodic table, you won't see 235 or 238. You'll see an uneven number. So let's talk about how we can find the average weight. The first thing I'm going to do is a simplification, and it's really not quite true, and it's not going to give you quite the right answer. But I want to do that first because it gives you slightly simpler numbers. The weight basically comes from the number of protons and neutrons. On average, a proton and a neutron has a mass of about one atomic mass unit. So, here let's just pretend that the weight of the uranium-235 atom is 235. 0.7% is uranium-235, so we're going to change that to a decimal by dividing by 100. So we're going to multiply that by 0 0.007. Uranium-238 has 238 protons and neutrons. We're going to multiply that by 99.3% as a decimal, 0.993, and then we're going to add those up. So remember, to find a weighted average, all we have to do is take our score and multiply it by the percent abundance. Take our score, multiply it by the percent abundance, take our score, multiply it by the percent abundance, and add them all up. So we're taking our mass, multiplying it by its percent abundance, taking our mass, multiplying by its percent abundance, and we're going to add those up. And when we do that, we get 237.979. Now I want you to notice this does not match what's on our periodic table. The reason it does not match is not that I have the wrong percent abundances. The reason it doesn't match is I have the wrong masses. We said that on average, a proton and a neutron have a mass of about one atomic mass unit. It turns out, and this is beyond the scope of our discussion right now, that the mass of a proton and a neutron change slightly depending on how they are bound together. We say some of the mass is converted into binding energy. So the mass of protons and neutrons can change depending on how they're held together. We call that mass defect. Now, the way we can make a correction for that is if we know the actual mass of the isotopes. So here we approximated the mass of uranium-235 as 235, but it's really 235.04. 0 0.07%, or pardon me, 0.7%, 0.007 is uranium-235. The mass of uranium-238 is really a little bit more than 238. It's 238.05. 99.3% of naturally occurring uranium is that. So if we use these actual masses instead of our estimated masses, when we do this calculation, we get our correct average atomic mass, which agrees with what we find on our periodic table. Now, I'm going to come back in a second video and I'm just going to go over the essentials, but I want you, wanted you to see where that comes from, how we know to find the average atomic mass.